Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a super, super great Monday, and welcome to Tuesday. Today's a wonderful day. Um, it's been a little bit foggy over here in Washington, a little overcast, which is probably normal for October, but you know, it's already the 23rd. I hope everyone is having fun getting ready for Halloween. I love Halloween. Hello, it is my favorite holiday of ever. Because well, it's a pagan holiday, of course, but and not only is it so miraculously fun that we all get to dress up and be whoever we want to be that day. Isn't that fabulous? I love it. That makes me really happy. And I like to see all the kids dressed up and being happy. It's just wonderful. I love Halloween. So I hope everyone is having a good time getting ready for Halloween on this beautiful wall fall colors. Oh, autumn is just fantastic. There's so many beautiful colors out there with the trees changing colors and the leaves all getting beautiful orange and crimsons and just beautiful, beautiful colors. Okay, I know I put out a broadcast yesterday saying that I missed a, a training session for you guys because I was at the VA, spent the day over there talking to some people and it was just you know, whenever you talk to people that are older and they, they really know stuff and they, they are really in tune with, you know, what's going on. I had some really good conversations yesterday and I just feel so blessed to be able to have those. So I'm sorry I missed the time with you guys, but it was really, really good that I was able to be able, I was able to be over there. And so I'm always blessed when I get to go talk to the gentlemen and the ladies, mainly gentlemen I find at the Veterans Hospital. Um, getting different procedures and different things done and whatnot. So a lot of them are older. So there's a wide variety of people over there, and it's really amazing. But for this week, what I had scheduled and I had planned this, I put it together over the weekend, is, and I thought I would just break it all down and help you guys in small tidbits like I've been doing and spreading it out. Um, I don't know what that says. Hi. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to break it down because there's so much out there and there's so much that people can learn and see and know. It's just, it's amazing how much is actually in the world vibrationally and knowledge wise that we tend to not share with each other for fear that we're, or someone's going to get ahead of us or whatever the reason is. I don't have an answer for that exactly. Let's see. Hold on. My desk is still congested with two laptops and all this stuff. It drives me crazy. I can't stand congestion. My office is congestion. I got Christmas presents backed all over the place. Yeah. Can't wait to get those wrapped and get those taken care of. But back to you guys now. Okay. I'm so sorry. I got sidetracked there with my messy office. Okay. There's actually 15 key lessons that wealthy people teach their kids from the time they're old enough to understand and they actually start teaching them very young like at five or six and I made some notes here for myself so I wouldn't miss anything I wanted to talk to you guys about here this morning and I'm just gonna break it down and give you the top three today okay and this is how they we kick it off and once you learn these lessons yourself, you can learn these lessons. It might be a little bit harder as you're older to readjust your thinking to be able to get that mentality that when you're a child, it's easier because you're still in the growing phase. You're still in the phase of learning and absorbing and accepting. So it is different when you are older and you have to condition your mind to be able to accept these different traits so you can do it I know you can because I teach a lot of people and it's it is doable it's a little frustrating I'm not gonna kid you it is frustrating when you're trying to change a program that you've set in your mind for yourself when you're trying to change that mentality and that way of thinking into something else that you have rejected your whole life 
Or maybe you've only rejected part of what we're going to talk about this morning. Maybe you've rejected all of it. It just depends on your upbringing. And it's nothing against your parents, your grandparents. It's nothing against anybody. It's just the way it is. So um, the top three lessons, and I, I, told, I call them lessons because as you're teaching your children, if you have children um, that are still at home or grandchildren, start with them. Start as you're teaching them, you will find yourself getting the grasp of this mentality. And once you do, you open your chakras and you open that third eye, which is the pineal gland. And once you do that, oh my gosh, you know what? There's so much wonderful, wonderful vibrations out there that will come to you so easy. And wealth is only one of the huge gifts that we have been given at birth to have whatever we want in life. So I want to teach you this really this morning and help you to get on the right path to what you want to accomplish, to what you want to do. It's all up to what you are wanting to do in your life. Okay, so take this to heart. Think about it. Don't overthink it. These are simple lessons. They're simple. You start with children. Oops, hold on. My computer did a flink. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, like I said, I wrote myself notes over the weekend, so I would make sure I didn't forget anything that I could be as detailed as possible to help you guys with this. If you want, take notes, take a screen. Oh, you can't take a screenshot. I'm not typing. Um, you could take notes if you want to. You don't have to. You can. Or you could just reread or rewatch the video because I will make sure it's posted. And if it's not, then I'll try to make it in my saves because Facebook has been being a stinker of letting things go. So, um, hold on. Let me adjust my camera there. There we go. Okay, we're going to go with lesson number one, of course. Um, you want to talk about finances with your children, the budget, where the money comes from, what happens that you get the money, what are the areas and how, of work and how to get it. So you want to be sure you're being very specific. And you would be surprised how much children understand when they're little. Um, you can have a little five-year-old child, four and five years old. They really understand, because I have grandchildren, and they understand when you tell them, okay, you know, they want something. They always want something, right? They want to go to the store. They want to go shopping. They always want something. But if you teach them, okay, this is how much this costs, right? X number of dollars. And, okay, well, to get that, what are we going to do? What are we going to earn? How are we going to earn this money? And if you teach the kids when they're little that money is earned and you have to do something, you have to have an asset in order to have that money keep coming in, you know, what are they going to do? What are they going to, you know, make happen? And what we've seen over the generations is the people that have given the wealth to their children through the through the cycles, the person that created the wealth, let's get this down to, to nuts and bolts. The person that created the wealth for the family, you know, the business or whatever, they had a certain mentality of building assets, which we're going to go over that in our next number two. And when you learn that that there is always a payment there's always a price everything you want there is a price well the people that have just given the wealth to their children and the children gave it to their children over the generations that wealth will they think they deserve it if you have a child a young person any person that thinks they deserve to have this because you earned it because you the father, mother, grandfather, grandmother created this wealth and now they feel like they deserve it? Wrong mentality. They will eventually lose it all. It's been happening over and over again. And they end up, and I keep seeing this, and it's just crazy how I'm seeing this. Thank you. I appreciate you liking my topic, Granny. Um, 
it's really really important if you want to have your home business it's a legacy what you are building if you are building a home business right now even if you are an affiliate it doesn't matter you are building a legacy and that legacy is built around you and your name because that's what you do you build around you you are the foundation so the people that just give it to them over the generations give it to them give it to them it ends up dwindling down 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 and I'm seeing this more and more and more so you want to stick with old school and old school is the way we taught our children to respect money and how it's earned and it's not going out and getting a job and breaking your back that is not what I'm talking about that is the last thing I would ever tell anyone to do physical labor is fine don't get me wrong it is fine I just will not recommend that to anybody go out and hurt themselves with a job because a job is only the person working for another person that person that owns that company that owns that product that owns that system they are the money they are the leader they are in control so you want to teach your kids where the money comes from you have to earn the money it's not given to you and wealthy people teach their kids this most of the regular population doesn't see this in how the children are taught and what they do and how the parents react with them most of society doesn't see that they only see these people these children have so much and I'm not talking about actors or people like that I'm talking about business people excuse me <coughs> I'm not excuse me I'm not talking about entertainers I'm talking about business people okay entertainment is a whole different ballpark and it's not actually it's just it's not something that's even in the ballpark of what we're talking about okay so number two is after you get the the notion that oh this has to be earned what are you going to do to earn this I can get this for you but I had to earn this I had to have some kind of investment I had to have something that was going to get this to give to you okay and one thing that you could do I guess um, an example okay what I'm doing right now is I am giving you value here this morning on these calls I am giving you different techniques I'm giving you different systems but I had to earn those systems I had to earn those techniques I had to earn that knowledge it didn't just come to me free I had to do something to get it see what I mean I didn't just boom and it just didn't show up on my doorstep and there it was it didn't happen like that it never does so you want to just be sure you're teaching your children right because we want our generations to be good and happy and we want them to know you cannot expect something for nothing you just can't if you do that then the whole society starts falling to hell in a handbasket excuse my language but it's true so on lesson number two is this is where it's going to get nuts and bolts here guys so pay attention to this okay lesson number two is the difference between assets and liabilities okay for the for the wealthy they teach their children we always teach them what an asset is and what a liability is and how to use both okay and for the wealthy and for the middle class and the um, the poor people try I tried to break that down as best I could to explain it all to make it um, flow easily for everyone I'm not saying anything bad about anyone that's in a different financial bracket we can't all be in the same bracket because we are a society and societies have levels okay that's I was trying to break it down the best way I could think 
to do it, um, I just think when I talk to my kids and my grandkids and how I break it down for them. And so um, what would you consider to be a liability? Does anyone have a comment or like to leave a comment in the chat? Does anyone want to participate this morning? Nope. Okay, what would you consider an asset? No comments? Hold on. I'm looking in the chat here, guys. Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, a lot of people think, a lot of people think that if you have a home, if you have a car, if you have a boat or, you know, whatever you have that you've bought would be an asset. Well, it's actually just the opposite. Your home is not an asset. It is a liability. Your vehicle is a liability. Especially if you're leasing the vehicle, it is throwing money down the toilet because you're just leasing to drive you're not buying to drive you're not keeping it you couldn't keep it you have to keep paying so it's nothing that you're ever going to have if you're leasing it that is a liability anything that you have that you have to pay for out of your pocket out of your main income is a liability and what you want to do is in order to have an asset, you can have a property that is an asset provided that property and people in real estate, we do this, your property has to be able to pay for your frugal spending. It has to be able to pay for your lifestyle. So if you are going into real estate investing, just an example you don't have to do this it's just an example then when you get real estate and that real estate is paying for your primary home that is an asset because you are not paying for it out of your personal income it is the liability that is paying for the asset which means the asset turns into an asset in your pocket okay it's a little difficult for a lot of people to understand how that works but it really does work and when you teach your kids how to invest and how what the difference is between an asset and a liability like for example for kids you could use their bicycle if they have a bicycle or a scooter or whatever it's paid for because you bought it well, you have to let them know, okay, I had to have X amount of dollars to buy that for you. So that means I had to earn in a way that was creating an asset. And this makes more sense as you get more into it. It makes a lot more sense as you're going through the motions of it because you'll be able to see the difference firsthand between a liability and an asset and how knowing the difference between those two as you're growing up or as you're teaching your kids if you're teaching them this then you are also learning it if you don't already know it and always teach your kids to think big because you know what we think all day long there's thousands of billions of thoughts going through our heads all day long so if you teach them to think big that okay I can get this and invest in that whatever technology or whatever area they're wanting to do whether it be in real estate or whether it be in you know consumables or you know whatever or maybe they want to go into you know building electronics you know Microsoft took off like that and there's you know Hewlett Packard and there's you know all these other companies that have done just that so there's no reason why 
if you have that thinking or that feeling or that mentality to do that, there's no reason why you can't bring it together and make it happen. None at all. So as you're teaching the young people, be out there, be positive, be sure, and be the person that is acquiring the assets. Most people end up with so many liabilities that they can't see past the bills. And, you know, when you invest, uh, what's the best way to put this? Uh, you can flip houses and it's no cost to you. And you just borrow the money and get buy the house, fix it, and then you sell it. And that's an investment there. You can do that. But if you build homes or something like that, then definitely get the business loan. Don't go investing your own money. Wealthy people never invest their own money. No, you don't invest your own money. You borrow it from the bank. And then you pay it back. And then all the profits is an asset because it wasn't your money to start with. You acquired it. And teach your children this as you're going along. And that's why you'll see children that come from wealthier families or even higher middle class have a different mentality and a different outlook on the way the world works. And the different things you can do for that. It's really that simple. People tend to make it so much harder than it is. It doesn't have to be hard. Okay. I would like to see you all do great. Okay. Let's go to number three. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Of course, I can't read my own handwriting sometimes. Okay, we're going to go into the growth pattern now. This is number three. Like I said, there are 15 total, and due to time-wise, I'm only going to go over three here in the top three. Okay, another thing that the children are taught most times in a wealthy family, they may act like they are entitled to all this, but they're really not. They're taught that they're not. So... Then the wealthy families will teach the children at a young age that they're not entitled to anything. They're not entitled to be rich. They're not entitled to have anything they want. And the rich know that it can go away any time. They know that it can just go, they could lose it all. And they don't live life in stress. Or worry they just know that things could change things could flip and they could lose it all um, and the thing is a lot of the times when you go into this part of knowing and growth the poor society and I'm trying to figure out the best way to put this for you guys um, I'm not saying anybody's better than the other. I'm not saying that at all. So please don't interpret it that way because I do not intend it that way. Um, but what, if you look around and see, the poor society expects it to be given. They expect the rich people to pay all the taxes. They expect the rich people to give them welfare. They expect to be given, be given, be given, be given. And whatever they do get, they spend it. There's no investing in an asset that's going to pay them back or that's going to pay for the luxuries. And that's where the split comes in very hugely because the wealthy people, they know that wealth is something that they've earned and it is something that they earn every day. It is a pattern that has to be worked and growing every single day. You can't take a day and say, oh, well, you know, that one's falling down, that whatever I'm working on, that project's falling in the, in the pot, and I just won't worry about it because I got something else going on. And, you know, I got, I'll just rely on that. Or, you know, so, oh, so-and-so is going to give me some money for that, so I won't worry about it. 
It doesn't work that way because the mentality is totally different. We could be out having fun, you know, cruising around on a ship or, you know, sitting on an island, you know, with our laptop. You know, it doesn't mean we're not having fun. It just means that our mentality is about helping to keep the flow, to keep the pattern, to keep it going. And if you're teaching your children this as they're growing up, they will learn that they don't have to be number one in school. You don't have to have a 4.0 because it all relates, and I'm jumping ahead here to another section, but this is really important. Um, the 80-20 rule. I'm sure most of you have heard of the 80-20 rule. You work 20%. And you take action at 80%. That's where the money is. And if you teach your kids that, you don't have to spend more than 20% of your time learning something. It's just a waste. And there's so many people now going, this is, I've jumped ahead here, but I just really important, I want to put this in here. It's really important that people learn and know that it doesn't matter what kind of a business you have teach your children what you're doing to make it an asset teach the children how they can do the same and if we teach our children these lessons they can go out and have a company build a company build an asset a residual income they can build this foundation and grow with it just as you are. Maybe you're just learning. Maybe you've spent your life at a job and you have not had the mentality or the break. I've heard, I heard a lot of that yesterday. You know, where I was, like I said, I was talking to people at the VA and I was talking to a lot of older people and got different, a lot of different perspectives. But I already had this, what I was going to talk to you about today already planned out because I planned it out over the weekend but I just had you know how it's funny when you are thinking of something and you you know you're going to do something it's funny how things just come to you and you just you get you learn more and you see more so as I was going through this and it just people just kept you know coming to me and just started talking about different things as I was you know waiting and doing different projects or whatever I was just mainly waiting but it's a given that you know you'll be you'll attract these things to you so the thing is for this process that we're here talking about here this morning is teach your children how to create assets and not liabilities in their lives and the earlier they learn this the more successful they will be in whatever they choose to do and the same with you it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter. If you want to grow your home business, which a lot of people I speak to are doing a home business, then why not just do the mind flip? Do the mind flip. Meditate. You have to meditate and clear your mind every single day because that gives you more positive energy and more focus coming to you. Okay? It's really important, and it's just so important to, hold on. I wrote myself these notes because I wanted to talk to you guys and make sure it was all going away. Da, da, da. Okay, so you want to teach your children not to be expecting the government, the people, the country, whatever, to give them everything. Wealthy people don't expect that at all. They don't expect it. They know that they have to create assets. They have to eliminate liabilities. And you have to, there is a ways. And there's so much out there. And there's so much teaching. And there's so much learning for everybody to do. And I just wanted to start off with these first three lessons because they're so important. And if you can teach your kids these, then they will have a fighting chance. Like I said, there are 15 different lessons that we teach our children as they're growing up. And you can too. And I will, <clears throat> excuse me, I will work on, um, I've got them all written down here. 
all of them. I wrote them out over the weekend very meticulously so that I wouldn't forget anything as I was speaking to you. Because you have, have you ever been talking and all of a sudden something else jumps in your brain and then boom, you're like, oh, I'm on another tangent here. i got to back up. So it's really important to help you guys to understand that. And use these techniques yourself too. If you're not in that frame of mind right now, use these techniques and help the children. Of course, I'm really up into helping the children and help yourselves and help your lifestyle. You can create the lifestyle you want. You can create the business you want. You can create the legacy that you want because your name is your legacy. And whatever you put your name on, that is what's going to go down in history for you, your family, through the, the generations. Okay, it's really important that you have a good foundation to pass on to your little ones. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful and I hope you all got value from this. I spent a lot of time working on it, but there are 15 of them. So I thank you all so much for joining me here today. I am very blessed. Excuse me, my throat's a little froggy today. I'm very blessed that y'all came and spent your time with me this morning. Thank you so much. And I will have a chat with you again. I believe I'm free tomorrow. Yes. I had to stop and think. I have another call here. Ooh, in two minutes. Okay, I will chat with you later. Thank you so much. And like and share this video if you don't mind. Because uh, I'm going to throw it over on YouTube. And we don't want Facebook to get it or gone. Okay, guys, I will chat with you later. Thank you so much for listening. And take value from this, please, please, please. I encourage you. Okay, bye-bye.